Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This is my second time filming this video today, so I'm a little bit agitated because I just finished filming the video and realized none of the audio recorded, so we had to like rejig the entire setup just to make sure it worked. Fingers crossed it's working this time because if it doesn't, I don't know what I'm gonna do today. <laughs> Honestly, I will lose my mind. But let's just get straight into this video. Today's video is actually going to be a bag review slash um, discussion of my all-time favorite, favorite, favorite luxury slash designer purchase ever. And that's gonna be featuring this Gucci Soho disco bag. I'm sure you guys have seen this bag all over Instagram. Um, probably a lot of people wearing it outside in the streets as well too. But I do have to say, as cliche as it is, this is my all-time favorite luxury purchase that I've ever, ever, ever made. And I'm gonna dive deep in and tell you guys why. So you guys had a really good response with my what's in my bag video and I had a couple of DMs and questions asking me to review the Chanel bag, which I will eventually, don't worry, but to also kind of review other bags as well too and other luxury designer purchases. So I figured why not kickstart this whole kind of series, I guess, if it's gonna be a series where I talk about the bags that I own, the pros and cons of them, whether or not they were worth the purchase and whether or not you should be buying them if you're sleeping on the decision. So let's jump right in and get started on this video. Okay, so there's gonna be a couple different aspects of this bag that I'm gonna talk about. And let's just start off right away with the overall design of the bag. Obviously, it is black. It literally matches anything and everything that I wear just because it is black. And there are quite a few other colors too. I think there's like a light beige, a tan, a red, a navy blue, a couple other colors, but I just honestly gravitated straight towards a black one because I've liked this ever since I first laid my eyes on it years and years and years ago. I've had this bag for, I believe, almost two years now, and out of all the bags that I've purchased since, and I have a few, this probably has to be the absolute most favorite bag I've ever used to date. And no, it's not the first bag that I've ever purchased that is a luxury designer bag, so that's not why I love it. I just overall love it purely because of its like straight up design and functionality. Aspect number two of the bag is the logo itself. I don't personally think that this logo is too intense. It's a little subtle. It's obviously not like crazy metal hardware on the bag. It's just kind of like embroidered into the front. It is big, so it can be kind of catchy to the eye if you know what to look for. But I think to the regular person, it doesn't scream, I'm a Gucci bag, look at me right away. And the best part about it is that if you don't want to show the logo because you're traveling somewhere and you're concerned about um, getting pickpocketed or stuff getting stolen out of your purse, you can always flip the bag to the other side and it's a flat back with no other distinguishing factors to it. There is no logo emblazoned on the top or heat stamp onto it. There's no extra pocket or anything. So from the back, it does look like a very regular leather bag if you don't know that this is a Gucci bag right off the bat by looking at its silhouette. So aspect number three about this bag is a really subtle hardware as well too. I'm not a crazy hardware girl, although I do love and look at my hardware when I'm purchasing bags. And not gonna lie, my Prada bag, I did purchase it mainly because of the Q Constellation hardware that's on it. But in general, I like my hardware to be very minimal and that's exactly what this bag is serving. In regards to the color, I'm not a huge gold fan, but the gold on here is so subtle that I can get away with it, I think at least for myself. The zipper, I think people describe this as like a silver gold because it's actually quite pale. If you look at it, you can't really tell that it's a gold right there. It looks actually quite like light yellow. The only real distinguishing gold is on the tassel zipper pull right here. And yes, I do use this to pull, pull open my zipper and to close it as well too. I do want to mention since we're talking about the zipper right now, it has a really good smooth slide. So you never really have any issues with it getting stuck. Although I don't know why I am right now. It's a really smooth zipper. The tassel on here, this is gold on itself, quite gold but the D-ring or oval ring or O-ring, whatever you want to call this, is also another pale gold as well too. And the only other really crazy hardware that's on here, I wouldn't even call it crazy at this point, is the strap with the buckle on it. Other than that, as you can see, it is quite simple. There's not much on the bag and I like it just like that. Aspect number four, I think we're on four right now, is the overall size of the bag. I think you would categorize this as a camera bag due to the shape of it. It's fairly rectangular. As you can see, it's not super wide here, but it does open up to be quite big. I'm gonna go ahead and open this bag and show you what it looks like inside. I can't, hey buddy, are you gonna join us? Do you wanna join me? Are you gonna join the video again? You always like to come in midway, don't you? All right, we'll see if he sits down. If not, we're just gonna continue the video. I love 
how big this bag is on the inside. Oh, he's leaving. Once you open up the bag inside, as you can see, it is quite massive and I can fit a lot of stuff in here. I honestly usually even also have my phone in here as well too and there's still so much space. I went to an event the other day. We're just going to ignore this whole situation happening here. I went to an event the other day where we were encouraged to take a lot of the chocolate bars that were being released. It was a collaboration between Cadbury and Oreo and I can honestly say I stuffed a solid 10 into this bag and still had so much leftover space afterwards. So. I think that speaks to how big and spacious this bag is. If you're the type of person who likes to carry a lot of stuff, just for reference, I'll show you what usually goes inside. Besides my phone, I have my Chanel wallet. I also have the little Celine bag that holds all of my lip products in here. And then I also have like some food coupons I need to go to soon. <laughs> my keys and also my bite lip product as well too. So that's how much stuff I can put into here. And I can also fit in an extra 10 candy bars. So if you're looking for space, this bag has got it. Since we're already talking about the overall design of the bag, I wanted to chat a little bit about the interior of the bag and the lining. So we're on to aspect number six. This is not leather lined, it's not satin lined. It's some sort of interesting like canvas material on here. So I'm never really concerned that I'm gonna get any marks on it or any scratches on the leather like some of my bags are on the interior since it's so durable and sturdy. There are two pockets on the inside as well too. There's one split pocket here and one more pocket on this side. I don't usually put anything into there besides stuff that is like really efficient for me to access if I need it right on the go, which is probably my Presto card, maybe my credit card if I'm running in and out of stores and I want it to be easily accessible. That's all I really typically put into there, but otherwise I usually put everything into the main compartment and it gets stored into there. Moving along to aspect number seven, I want to kind of chat about the leather of the bag. So this is kind of like a calfed grain pebble leather texture and it is so durable. Not only is it strong enough to really like keep its shape, granted I've taken this bag out in the rain, in the snow, in ice and sleet and hail, so it's kind of lost a little bit of its shape. If you see some other people online, they do keep their bag shape really, really well. Mine's a little bit slouchy now, but I do think it still has its overall shape. It's kept it pretty well, and that's thanks to the leather. Because the leather is so sturdy, that doesn't mean that the bag is difficult to open. I have quite a few bags that are like stiff on the sides. Anytime I try to open it, it's really hard to really put my hands inside to grab things. But the leather is also stiff, yet supple at the same time. So it's easy to maneuver, you can open it up really easily, and I can also put in and take up big objects without really like scratching my hands against the zipper because that's not fun. I've had this bag for about two years now and within that time frame, I don't think I've accrued any sort of like nicks or scratches on it. The only real obvious flaw that I've seen to this bag that I've added to it is the, there's like, it's hard to see, but there's this like little white mark on the base right here. And that's honestly just because I put this bag down on everything. It's such a durable bag. I put it on the floor, on the bench, on a table, like everywhere. And it's held up really, really well. So durability test wise and time test wise, it's been great. Going on to aspect number eight is the length of the strap here. It is actually the perfect length for me. There are three other holes, I think, no, four other holes that I can put the buckle into here. I'm on the shortest one, but if it's my height, I'm about five, 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 six. Perfect. So if you're looking into this bag and you're the same height as me, you'll get a rough idea. It sits roughly around like my hips. Um, and I've had no trouble with it being too high or too low. You can obviously adjust it quite easily. And if you do need to adjust it even more, you can always go into a cobbler to get some additional holes punched into the strap. All right, so we're gonna be chatting about aspect number nine. This is probably gonna be one of the cheapest bags that I've purchased to date. It has gone up in price quite a bit though. So when I purchased it, I think it was 11, 14, so $1,140. It has now gone up to $1,415, so $1,415. And if you add tax onto that, where I live, it's 13%. That comes out to almost $1,600. That's a lot of money for a little small bag. Granted, I do think that this bag is a phenomenal investment just because it has stood the test of time. Design-wise, it matches everything, and it's also just so durable and classic that like, I would pay for it all over again but I would highly recommend that if you go and get a consignment or you can even get a vintage, do it just because Gucci has been raising the prices quite a bit over the past couple of years and I can foresee this bag going even higher. Probably one day it'll eventually exceed $2,000 and that's pricey for a small bag guys. If you can get it similar to the price that I bought it two years ago, definitely do it. Aspect number 10, this is gonna be the very last one before I wrap up this video. Um, I just really wanted to chat about the overall color 
I know I've spoken about this already, but in terms of like fading, bleeding, that sort of thing, I have quite a few friends who have this exact same bag in the different shades as well too, and all of them are a lot lighter than mine, so they have found that their clothes have really transferred actually onto the back of their bags. If you have the tan or the pink beige one, um, there is a high likelihood you're gonna get a lot of indigo kind of like bleeding onto here from your jeans. If you wear dark jackets, you're gonna get staining on here as well too. And because of that, I really decided to go ahead with the black one. This was probably the first black designer bag I ever purchased at the time, which also kind of fell into the decision making process as to why I chose a black leather bag. But um, I really wanted an everyday casual bag that wasn't screaming, I'm a designer bag, look at me, and this is a fairly nondescript bag, so I want to be functional enough that I could wear with anything. I never truly worry about getting stains on it, which is why I gravitate towards the black one. As you can see, there are no stains, because black is the darkest color out there, and ain't nothing staining this thing. But in all seriousness, guys, I have never had any trouble of this bag staining any of my clothes. None of my clothes have black marks on it. I've already encountered the problem of getting stains on my beige patent Chanel, and that really breaks my heart. So I've learned my lesson that I don't think I'm fit to buy light colored bags. I'm gonna be sticking with dark color ones from now on. So this is a great example of a bag that you're never gonna get stains on to, and you'll never have to worry about whether or not it's gonna bleed onto any of your clothes or your clothes bleeding onto it likewise. That's essentially all my thoughts on the bag and why I consider it to be my number one recommended best luxury designer purchase ever. If you are currently sleeping on this bag, do not. The prices are only gonna go up. I think it is a great investment for anybody who's also starting in and adventuring with designer bags just because it's so durable, it's practical, it's a timeless, timeless silhouette and it's for a fairly decent price as well too. If you really want it, get it before Gucci continues to increase the prices. But otherwise, I hope this helped you make your decision or you just in really enjoy watching bag reviews. As always, let me know in the comments down below if you wanna continue seeing videos like this. I also have some luxury shoes as well too that I do wanna review and if you guys are interested in that, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up and join the fam if you're not already part of it. Until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!